Hey, it is me, Joff. Joff. And I have been banished to the tenth world called Sir Linkor. Hmm, that doesn't fit as a seat. Oh well, let's do this. I woke up in this mysterious world, wearing my lovely fire mage robe and shoes. And I had my trusty fire stick with me. The Staff of Ember. Which requires me to have my power called Eater, which I don't have at the moment. This makes fighting a tad difficult. But fear not my viking warriors, I have a plan. For my name is not... Cha. So as I run around like a headless chicken without direction because of having no map, I stumble upon the altar of Papa Deer, the first boss of Valheim. And for this challenge I embark on a journey to find a way to kill this boss without the map, without portals, and without using any melee weapons or ranged weapons other than my trusty fire stick. The staff of yeah, that, uh, yeah, that joke is getting old fast. So first I set out to walk towards the east-ish, following the light of the sun, hoping to hit the coast and get a better sense of direction. I stumble upon this house with a beehive. Now we could kill the beehive and take the queen with us, and this can be done without fighting even. But I don't think honey is going to do me a whole lot at this point, so I'm not going to bother. These lovely shrooms however, they are everywhere, they are plenty, they'll be part of my tasty food plan for quite a while, I can imagine. Hold it, what is this? I was banished with not only my equipment, but also some materials to build a golder table, wow. which allows me to repair my equipment. That might be kinda handy, cause I don't know what I'm getting myself into here. Hey look, we found raspberries! Another yummy snack to add to the meal plan. After quite a long walk we found a bit of a meadows clearing. I quickly looked around, but not a shore in sight. I do have a greatest fan following me though. I picked up all the goodies I could find, including stones, sticks, berries and shrooms. Stockpiling those might be essential, as we are hitting different biomes, like this black forest for example. Which has goodies of its own, like these carrot seeds. And although I'm not sure if we're going to do a carrot farm, at least these carrot seeds are not that heavy. So I thought I'll keep them around for now, but just like the queen bee for the honey, we might not get to use them. Yet. Now I kept running, ignoring the skeleton we just passed, and finally I saw what I was after. The shore! This should be the eastern shore guys. But hey, something else is here. It's Mr. Troll! Oh my god! But something feels off about this troll. Could it be that this is a one star troll? So as Mr. Troll demolishes the skeleton we had ignored, I came to the realization I was running in what I call camera mode. I quickly enabled my UI again so I could investigate the star rating of Mr. Troll. And the one star it is! These one star fuckers might hit a tad hard, so I made a run for it. But not without picking up additional carrot seeds of course. Hey, priorities! Now Mr. Troll gave up chase quickly and was replaced by Mr. and Mrs. Grey Dwarf. Who then got replaced by another Mr. Troll and a whole family of Grey Dwarfs. And this Mr. Troll just didn't want to quit. But eventually he got replaced by the Neck family and this is a bit of a theme you know, like they say. As long as you keep pacing. The black forest keeps chasing. <laughs> what, your mother never told you that? I kept following the coast through the black forest towards what in my mind was mostly going towards the north away from the center of the map. And this was exactly the plan. I then passed this troll cave for which the entrance can act as a really nice multifunctional place to stay the night at. Seeing how it was getting dark, I halted my progress and went back to the troll cave to set up shop. Now normally when you enter a cave like this, anything that was chasing you will lose you and give up. But around the corner, inside this troll cave, there is normally a troll chilling in the dark. But because he is around the corner, entering the troll cave for the very first time is fine. He won't detect you. However, this somehow makes the troll wake up. And he will soon start wandering around this little cave. Making it so that you can't enter this cave over and over to get rid of enemies. Now as you can see it's time to make a little camp here so we can spend the night. I positioned the campfire close to the exit so that it may benefit from the roof but I also don't get issues with the smoke. To 
make very sure we don't suffocate. I also add a little roof piece. Maybe it helps venting the smoke out, I don't even know. But now the stupid skeleton saw me again. God damn it. And to make matters worse, the troll was awake and he was coming for me. And the stupid skeleton also didn't bugger off. Now I did not plan to do the campfire trick. We place campfires to kill enemies, but this is an exception. I just put the skeleton on top of the campfire and wait for it. It's day two and I expertly demolished the camp in two tries. And I missed the campfire still, but that is alright. It took me some time, but I finally found the third and final yummy snack of my current food plan. I kept venturing north as I wanted to get away from the center. Cause here's the plan guys, I'm going to see if I can find a natural circling core farm. In order to get my hands on, well you guessed it, didn't you? With the circling core I would be able to get a smelter set going. But first I have to deal with a boar stone that I just stepped into. I pissed off a couple of boars I guess. Hey, that is a fun discovery. It's Haldor! I just ran into him. Now, needless to say, I don't really need him right now. I don't think I will need him for the longest time. But I, we found him. That's something. Normally I can't find the guy. And, and, and now I don't need him. And you just ran straight into him. That's just my luck. Next, I believe I reached the end of the mainland, all the way up in the north, where it transforms into some sort of black forest island formation. I have a couple of options now. I could follow the west coast. But it seems that will pull me back south, at least for the first bit, decreasing the chances that I find a swamp for the natural Surtling Core farm. I could also look for burial chambers and try to find Surtling Cores there, but I don't like it, it's too crowded. That leaves me with just simply checking out the island formation and see if it is some sort of crossing that we can swim. And if that fails, I have to make myself a raft, but that would mean backtracking to a meadows. Shit. Well, let's just spend the night here in this troll cave and see what happens in the morning. This seemed like an interesting location to at least go to the islands and see what is out there. It looks like there's a bit of land behind here, so let's do this! So I got stuck between Mr. Troll, a little rocky island on the left, and a little pot of rocks on the right. I ended up deciding I'd take my chances with the path of rocks, hoping there would also be rocks slightly underwater that I could still stand on. The first thing was already a bit dicey, because I couldn't decide on which rock I wanted to land. The next few were easy, nothing to worry about. But 
but now I had this bit to clear. And that seemed like a long swim, damn it. Here's hoping there are some rocks that I can stand on. Too close for comfort, but hey, we live. The final bit was at least easy. And now I had the options. Go to the left and face off with Mr. Troll with the stick. Or go to the right to this cozy meadows. Well, face off with Mr. Troll with the stick it is. Duh. As if we didn't have enough excitement already. Shit, that was maybe a bit too much excitement. Let's not do that again. Now Mr. Troll kept chasing me for a while, which is all fine, as that lead me to making another discovery. It's the location of Mr. Elder, Yay! the second boss of Farlheim. Jesus, I keep running into things, it's amazing. Now with the sun going down, I was following the western shore from the Elder it seems, which got me to a bit of meadows again. There I made yet another discovery. That is right, ancient trees. That means a swamp, something we definitely are going to check out in the morning, but I first need to find a good place to spend the night at, cause the chasing is simply way worse at night. Now I could probably take over this building quickly, but I thought I'd peek behind these trees, cause maybe there is a little black forest behind it with a troll cave or whatever. But what is that? Are you kidding me? This must be the luckiest nomad playthrough ever, cause we found Hildur. Jesus. Now again, not something we really need for the longest time, but it actually is kind of convenient for getting the chasing to stop. Cause if you enter Halder or Hilda's bubble, enemies just give up and go back to about the business. I'm very happy to use that on this run. So lucky. I checked around Hilder to see if there is any place I could sleep at, but I gave up as the sun died. So I went back to Hilder and just sit with her, and then I could also make myself a bit of a coffee while waiting for the next day. At the first sign of daylight I went out and discovered that Hilder is sort of on an enclosed bit of meadows surrounded by the sea and a couple of rivers. And where the rivers meet in the T-split, that's where the swamp starts. Remember this T-split? We'll be here a couple of times I guess. Now what is a natural surtling core farm, I hear you not asking. The swamp has surtling spawns, which are these fires that you can see from a distance. These spawn a lot of surtling enemies who like to throw fireballs at you. Just the thing I like to do with my trusty fire stick. Now these enemies drop coal and surtling cores and that's what we're after. But you need to kill them. And they die when they step into the water without us having to lift a finger which is quite handy if you can't fight. So what you could do is like use a pickaxe around the spawn until it is all swampy water. Then you get them to die easy. But yeah, I don't have a big axe. Or you find the setup in its natural form. That's where the circling spawn simply is already surrounded by water to begin with. By the way, there's a little plains over there. You can see one of those big rocks sticking out. Let's not go there. But now I head into the swamp without any poison resistance. And that's where I also make my next discovery. An abomination. Normally these guys are my friends, but not today. Luckily, we can easily lose them. I quickly figured this swamp is narrow, small, surrounded by plains, surrounded by meadows, and nothing to find in terms of certain core farms. Aww. And after half a day of exploring, I had seen everything, and it wasn't that interesting to be honest. So I saw this little hut in the meadows nearby. I prepared the hut for sleepings, and that's what we did. 
The next day I wanted a raft, so we set out to rile up these boars and grey dwarfs and feed them to the swamp. So, let's get this party started! Yeah, that skill was a bit unexpected, it almost killed me, holy shit, let's hide. Top of the morning guys, yesterday was a productive day, and we're now at day 6. I had enough leather scraps, but I still needed a couple of resin, so I let these skeletons fight with the grey links. I could actually also have chopped a couple of tiny trees. I'll just do it the hard way, no worries. This works fine too. En route to the coast I pick up a couple of twigs. Made a little workbench on the western shore. It is actually close to the hill there, but I wanted to get going as soon as possible. It was a simple sail towards the land that we could see in the west. I coast sailed a bit south, but that took forever on the raft of course. So I abandoned the raft and went on foot looking for a swamp. And I found a swamp, Yay! so that was cool. It was next to a troll cave and I decided to set up shop in the troll cave because it was getting night again already. This stupid raft took forever of course. So I go inside the troll cave to reset the grey dwarfs that were trying to the bee. This happens a lot guys, my English sometimes leaves me. I cut it out normally, I kept this one just for reference. And with the Great Wars no longer chasing me, I could finish up camp. And then I would try to sleep, and then of course there are enemies nearby. But how you get around that is just keep pressing the bed over and over again, at some point the game allows you to sleep. Works all the time, almost, usually. Now in the morning I started the coast hub, two arts and into the swamp. I'll spare you the details, it is quite boring actually seeing me hop around in the swamp. It's easy for some reason. But this is important, this is what we were after. Here they are, the Serling Core Farms, Jesus! In a river, that is usually where they are. Now this first one didn't have a Serling Core for me yet, just coal. So I went to take a look at the second one, but there is a little drugger behind me. I just felt it would be better to grab my raft, come back here, cause this is shit, Jesus. Swimming back to the black forest where my troll cave hideout was proved also to be a bit of a challenge. Hey friends! It's amazing I haven't been poisoned yet, I wonder how that will turn out. Now we arrived at Hilder at night, I decided I would cook some of the deer meat and the boar meat that we found. Those are also yummy snacks you know, it's a nice upgrade even. And in the morning I decided it was time to make this place my home, cause we're committed now to this one. Now we're building next to Hilder so I could easily reset these guys, but yeah, hey. Keeping running back and forth between Hilder and here also is unproductive. 
So I just let my Greydor friends help me, I suppose. Oh, sorry, Greydor friend. Yeah, that is not cheating, that is just stupid. And let's finish this design up with some underfloor heating. It's already day 9. I still needed to make myself a stairs. And I wanted to set up the golder table. This frees up a lot of inventory space and carrying weight. And we can finally be fully repaired, yeah! Next, I sorted my inventory and I set up my food plan for the Sertling Core Farm dive. And I used a bit of the coal that we found earlier to do a finishing touch on the house. Oh, hello Mr. Skeleton. Then I used Hilda to reset Mr. Skeleton. I made sure everything is in order so that I can sleep in early. And we go next morning for our certainly Core Rough Dive. Hey, my friend is back! But here we are boys and girls, the moment we have all been waiting for. This is going to unlock a lot of shit for us of course. We first have to make the dive work. Preferably without blowing up the raft. That was exciting. I don't know why I didn't see that certain course in the middle earlier. I think the raft got a little bit of a beating there. Jesus. Yup, one third left. But hey, we did it. We have five certain cores. Yes. Now of course the stupid raft is so slow that I couldn't do this in one day. So we sailed back during the night. And in the morning we also hit a storm, making it really hard to see where we were going. But as soon as the storm finally cleared, we were in the right direction it seems. Very exciting to be pedaling the whole time, against the wind. But yeah, you should recognize that structure on the right. Hey, it is already, we already did half a day. Pedaling, goddammit. Behind there you can see already our base popping up. Already. And since we already skipped the night, let's sleep in already. Early, already. Yes, so we can do some twig hunting in the morning while looking for a Mr. Troll and a copper deposit because yeah, that is next on the list of course, grabbing some copper. Yes, boys and girls, all that hard work for, let's see, one copper ore, Jesus. Now it took me a couple of tries, but in the end I got it down, I nailed it. I was able to have Mr. Troll farm some copper ores for me, yes. 
So I put down the smelter and I put in some ores and I put in some coal from the circling core dive that we did earlier. With that going I noticed I had picked up some deer hides so this needed to go in. It's important. But now we're struggling for space so I needed to make myself a little table on top of my chest. No idea how we're going to access the chest now but hey. I went outside to see how many coppers were ready, there were only 3, I needed 6 for a forge. And then I noticed there was quite a crowd of biggest fans grouping around my hut. Which I of course had to introduce to my best friends. And very satisfying. Back home we had enough copper to set up the forge. And then I was looking at the forge and I was like shit, I think we need bronze for the items that we are after. Which we need copper for still. But also, you guessed it. Ding! I swapped the smelter out for the kiln to make more coal and let the tin smelt while taking a beauty nap. So it was ready in the morning. I crafted my first piece of bronze and took a look at the long list of new recipes that unlocked. One of the things we were after were bronze nails to make us a boat. And the other thing we were after is not on the list yet. Why, I hear you not asking? I needed stupid core wood still, Jesus, for a cultivator, yes. So here I am clumsying my way around with the stone axe, being helped, or so called helped, by my friends. I know I should have called Mr. Troll way earlier, but hey, he came over himself, so that was kinda nice of him. Yeah, Mr. Troll makes it look really easy. Thank you Mr. Troll. I went back home and made myself the cultivator, and I made myself some bronze nails, and I made myself the bear. Wait a second, where is the carve? Oh, oh shit, I need deer hide. No wait, I have the deer hide, actually. There were six in the chest and there's four more on the ground, in the carpet. I need pine wood, Jesus. Now this all looks a bit clumsy, but I actually got the hang of it. I mean, I just walk around with my trusty fire stick out, blocking any incoming damage, and I roll for Mr. Troll, and Mr. Troll does the work. It's so easy once you have it nailed down. Mr. Troll's work is rewarded with a nice carve, it's finally there. And I took down the golder, I have to take it with me. Now let's go on a new adventure, boys and girls. Yeah. But goodbye, hill there. Goodbye, hut. See you next time. Probably soon, I think. But first, let's find ourselves some mistlands islands that are not covered in mist. So we're sailing north, and a bit more north, and a bit more north, because that's where the mistlands are. Aren't they? We found them, the mistlands. It's away from the spawn, they're all around the map. Basically, you can't mist them. Ah. Now the first thing calling out to me was this nice little duck that was left behind by the friendly dwarves that live around here. And this time they really are friendly if you don't attack them. What is not so friendly however is this little gyal that all of a sudden popped into my view. Getting a bit too close for comfort here Jesus. That would be being a nice warm welcome to the mistlands. Good thing I didn't grab the gyal's attention because that would have been the end of me and my carve and probably the whole run. Because I'm not going to do that bronze farming shit again. I don't know. Oops! Our next discovery are these nice little blue friends. And this is what we're after boys and girls. This is what unlocks my power. This gives me either The mage cap! It was getting dark and I didn't want to spend the night in the mistlands on the boat or on foot. So I decided to set up shop here on this island with the wood that I brought. And I quickly went ahead and made my little underfloor heating design. And after we slept with the first bit of sunlight I started working with my hoe preparing the land for my cultivator. But that's where I went wrong actually. I thought I could grow a couple of trees here, but they died. And we also couldn't cultivate this land, so I couldn't grow my mage caps, god damn it. Turns out there are two types of soil, one you can grow shit at and the other one is a rocky kind of thing that you can morph but you can't grow shit on. And the trees wouldn't have grown in the mistlands at all, but I didn't know that at that time. I tried raising the land, because I thought maybe raised land from the ocean is cultivatable. Needless to say it was the same shit. So I went around with the boat. There were actually plenty of islands not covered by the mist and a lot of mage cat to pick up. But I was not able to farm on any of these lands, which was kind of shitty. 
make matters worse, I had picked up a couple of friends from a nearby patch of swamp and they were destroying the boat, god damn it. Now again, if they destroy my boat, it's done, it's over. And I'm getting quite sick of this. I was here to farm mage cap, which turned out to be a total shit show. And then now I'm getting killed by my favorite creatures of the swamp? What is this? I decided I had enough. And I do indeed have enough mage cap for the time. Hmm. So it is time to unleash the power of... Oh, so many things almost went wrong there. We had an angry dwarf and I killed my boat almost. So I hurried back out on the sea and it was a bit dark, it was foggy and I had no clue where I was going. I found a bit of meadows, which was not our meadows with Hilda in our base, no. But I had to set up shop here and repair the boat and do a little test. So here's the thing boys and girls, the eater that you get from Mage Cap is only 25. And I, being a good fire mage, was banished with the elemental skill kept out. Which allows me to cast a fireball at 24 ether. But now that the magic cap is up, it will quickly diminish the maximum amount of ether that I have and I will soon not be able to cast any more fireballs. Turns out with the timer at 15 and 14 I'm fine. But then it turns 13 and somewhere during that minute it goes to shit. Yep, can't cast spells anymore. And now I don't hear you asking, will this be enough to kill Papa Deer? Let's find out. Spent the night and wanted to go out on the sea in the early morning, of course it was foggy again. It's day 22, because the whole mage cap adventure and the sailings in reality took a bit longer than I showed you in editing. Now I'll spare you the details, but I was on the sea for quite a while trying to find back the mainland or our Hilder base. Now I know you can always look at the sky and you see the big tree and this led me to what I believe is the mainland. It's just the west coast that we haven't seen yet before. Which I kind of confirmed by going north again and seeing all these small islands pop up. That's where we crossed over swimming, right? And sure enough, when I continued and followed the coast, we hit a familiar landmark. Which of course was followed by another familiar landmark. I was home, guys. Hooray! And now that we passed the elder, I had a new idea. What if I try to kill the elder and go back with the elder trophy back to Papa Deer and turn in both the elder and the Papa Deer trophy in one go? That saves me a trip. Now with the Hilda base restored in its previous glory, I went out and started to over prepare for the elder fight, because that's what I like to do.
Ja, das happened. Jesus. I got the gear back, including my yummy snacks, like the raspberries, yes. And I also picked up some buke berries that you see in the bottom left corner. Because here's the thing, if I go fight the elder and I run out of eater and can't cast any more fireballs, then I will retreat to this troll cave and eat a buke berry. <laughs> Yummy. And that way I could eat another mage cap and start over with the fireball castings. But first things first, we need another seed before we can spawn the elder. Final seat in my pocket, I woke up in my nice little troll cave next to the elder spawn. And it is finally time to test my trusty fire stick and see if we are worthy of a boss trophy. I didn't even need a buke berry. And I don't think Papa Deer will be very happy to see us, no. So I sailed back the mainland. We're following the east coast south and we're looking for meadows. I'm quite annoyed with myself that I didn't leave a marker when we got to the east coast the first time when we started the game. I have to sort of guess where Papa Deer is. Which sucks. Uh, most of the coast was black forest, a couple of exceptions earlier, but that didn't lead anywhere. I then found this little bit of meadows sticking out between two black foresters. And there was a little hut that I thought I would make my own. Now going inland it was a pretty big meadows, which was actually a good sign. It just meant that I had to do a lot of walking. And a lot of walking I did. And I sometimes would bump into these stones which look a lot like the spawn stones, but they aren't. They are just regular stones. I used the chopping block as a compass. It's a nice little trick to know where you're going. And then I stumbled upon the Papa Deer altar. Yeah! I still needed the deer trophies and I wanted to go back to my hut to unload some of the goods that I have in my pocket says. So I decided to make a road to a clearing that I was passing earlier and which I can easily home in on. Just a nice way to find the Papa Deer altar again. Now as you might have remembered at the start, I spawned at the spawn stones and I immediately ran into the Papa Deer. And what do you know it? 
when I was building my road. I, I just walk into it. That was lucky. Although I must say, I have been roaming the place for a couple of days, so <laughs> it's not that lucky. I had the elder trophy on me, so I decided to hang it. It's one of those things you really appreciate doing. It's just so satisfying. Love it. I built my road out a little further, because this was not the clearing that I mentioned. And when I reached the clearing, I made a little stick to tell me the next time I come here, like, Hey man, here's your road. Uh, from the clearing it was easy to get back to my hut, where I went to spend the night, so that I had a full day of deer killings ahead of me. And I decided to make a little spawn hut. This will become a handy as well in the future too, right? But enough already! And so boys and girls, our journey becomes a full circle, as we finish what we started, where we actually started. Now if you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up so that it may spread a little more through the YouTubes. And if you want to see what is next for me, feel free to subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments that this journey must be continued. If enough people ask, I will provide. Or my name is not. Ciao. And now the YouTube will show you my other work. Yes, click it. For more fun, click it. Yes, click it. <laughs>